Welcome ESA Explores listeners. I'm your host for today, Laura Zomühlen, and in this series, we're meeting the members of ESA's Astronaut Reserve. During the first phase of their Astronaut Reserve training here at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne in Germany, they are mastering key skills in spacecraft systems, robotics, scuba diving, and survival training. Our guest today is Andrea Patassa from Italy, a skilled test pilot with a passion for problem solving and the great outdoors. Let's hear all about his experiences with ESA's Astronaut Reserve. Hi, Andrea. Welcome to the ESA Explores podcast. Hi, Laura. It's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. How are you doing today? Great. You had a lot of training already today? Yeah, we've had quite a bit of training. Actually, today is the last day here at EAC, and then next week we'll move to the mountains for the winter survival. Oh, wow. So do you already know what's going to happen? Not really. Uh, it's They keep it uh, kind of secret, not a secret, but a surprise, so mm -hmm. that uh, we, we don't know what to expect, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty awesome. Yeah. Have you already done something similar? I have done something similar uh, as I am a military pilot this background and it's part yeah. of the training of a pilot as well. Mm -hmm. And so I may have an idea on what's going to happen, but probably it's going to be also similar but different. So, and yeah. I had a lot of fun the first time I did it with the Air Force and I'm sure this is going to be at least the same. Yeah. Have you any idea where you're going? Yeah, it's uh, on the Pyrenees ah, okay, uh, between the France and uh, Spain, yeah. right on the border. I think it's on yeah. the Spanish side, but right on the border. Yeah, yeah. And it was snowing uh, last week right. every day. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of snow and the conditions will be perfect for the survival. But yeah, I feel like you're looking forward to it. So I, it am, like I am. I, I, I love those kind of things, you know, practical things in the nature, open air, doing yeah. challenging stuff and yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, wow. So yeah, as you said, it's the middle or nearly the end of the first part of the training. And then thinking back to the selection, what was the first thing that came in your mind when you found out? Astounding. Like, uh, it's, I still find it hard to believe when I, when I think about it. You know, it's so, so incredible. I would have never guessed to, when I started. It yeah. was such a dream that I would, would have never uh, dared to hope to get to the end. And still, after two years, it's still hard to believe. Yeah. And then now that you're here, what is your favorite part of this training? So I get this question a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, it's very hard to find an answer. You know what I mean? It, everything was so, so great. Like all the classes we had, they were very interesting and all the activities we did. Mm -hmm. um, and we also had a lot of practical stuff like uh, the dives in the pool. We will do this winter survival, the yeah. physical fitness and so yeah, everything was great, but probably one thing I really enjoyed is like meeting all the people here at EAC and most importantly, spending more time with, uh, with the other uh, mm -hmm. members of the reserve. Mm -hmm. So we, we got to um, really bond and form a, a strong team there. Yeah. And is there any moment maybe that you particularly remember as a team bonding moment or any funny thing that happened? I cannot think of a specifically funny moment, uh, but we've had so many um, small, mo you know, the, the most important ones are the uh, details, the, yeah. the dinners together, the, the coffee break and, you know, a joke here and there yeah. uh, or a supporting word that all those little things together. Yeah. Uh, they were very important. They, they made us come together as a team. And I'm sure that next week in the mountains will be like the perfect time to spend more yeah. time together in a challenging environment doing cool stuff. And yeah. I think that will be like, to, it will take us to another level as yeah. a group. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. You have a very exciting background in aviation, or you mentioned that before. Do you have any, or do you think of any skills that help you from, from that time here in the training? Yes. So um, being a military pilot in the Italian Air Force and a test pilot, many I found out that many skill sets, many uh, technologies, many competencies are overlaps mm -hmm. quite a bit between the, the aeronautical sector and the space sector. Uh, if you th if you think about it, like at the beginning, all the first astronauts they all came they all came from uh, test pilot environment uh, in the U.S. Air Force or Navy. So yes, the skills are very, very similar, uh, very overlapping, uh, similar technologies. I, I got trained for years to like work with complex machines, work under stress, um, deal with risk, manage risks in, a, in a, making sure it's, uh, it's minimized, mm -hmm. uh, but also the soft skills that are required to work in a team, to face challenges and 
and do difficult things all together. Yeah. Uh, that, that's very important for, for an astronaut, I think. And we learned that as well uh, when you're in space, in a very small, you know, spacecraft uh, yeah. working and in a challenging environment and stressed out. It's very important to be able to work well and, and focus on the objective as a team and not as an individual. Yeah. And what excites you the most about space exploration? It's hard to tell. You, I have, you know, a lot of great expectations, uh, but when you try to figure out something in your mind, it's always somewhat different. It can be, uh, most most of the times it's better. I, mm. I really feel that um, space exploration or like space flight is even better than what I uh, experience, uh, why, of what I expected in my head. Yeah. Um, but exploration in general is learning new things, you know, um, there is always something new that we don't know mm. to be learned and that uh, expands our knowledge, expands our technologies, our capabilities. I'm a very curious person mm -hmm. and this curiosity is what uh, pushes me uh, towards space exploration in general, not only human, but like getting to know our yeah. universe better and uh, finding out new technologies and yeah. finding out uh, new science that's that's what really yeah. interests me did you always like space or even as a kid have you dreamed of uh, going to this this sector in this area so when i was a kid of course i would have loved to be an astronaut mm. but uh, to me as a kid being an astronaut was like being spider-man you know i would oh. have loved to do that but it's <laughs> something that's only yeah. in, in comics and in you know in cartoons it, I'm unattainable yeah um, then I grew up, I grew up and uh, my dream was to become a fighter pilot and yes. that's what I did. And yeah. I, that, that was my career. Yeah. Then during this career, I learned that many of the skills, as I was saying, uh, overlaps. Yes. And I learned that many astronauts come from the Italian Air Force, actually the Italian astronauts, many of them. And I had the chance of meeting some of them and mm. that was so inspiring. And I started to realize that, um, it was attainable like the astronauts were in flesh and blood they were not only in movies or mm -hmm. cartoons so i was like okay well, then I, I started to get closer to this environment to this sector and i started getting uh, passionate about it and when the selection came out uh, three years ago i i applied immediately yeah so talking about fascination for space do you have any favorite space mission yes i will answer with the voyager missions mm. i know it's not uh, it's not Common. I mean, of course, I have uh, human space uh, exploration related missions that are very obvious, but I particularly like also the Voyager missions yeah. because they are, uh, apart from all the exciting science they did, all the discoveries, I think they're quite almost poetic because mm. we, we pulled a, a golden plate there with, you know, the position of Earth and the, some sounds from Earth and how the humans look like and all the informations and sent, the, sent them out in mm -hmm. outer space to be found some, somewhere someday. Yeah. And it's kind of a, a modern message in a bottle. And yes. that fascinates me so much. And plus they took awesome pictures that inspired me and many other people, like the very famous pale blue dot, if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Speaking about worlds far, far away and outside, and exciting environments to to live and work in. What was the most challenging environment for you so far? It's hard to pick one. Mm -hmm. I'd probably say uh, Best Pilot School in Edwards. Right. Uh, that was a very challenging environment, like uh, always a lot of stress every day, a class, exams, every flight was an exam. And there were, we were put under a lot of pressure uh, mm -hmm. to learn a lot of new skills, another new theory in a very limited amount of time. And that pushed me, but working with a lot of other incredible people, I think I, I learned a lot there. And, and as you did here, I guess, and also with the, with the survival training coming up uh, next week. So I wish you all the best of luck for this. And I hope to speak with you again so you can report about all these exciting <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very much. And I'm looking forward to speak to you again soon. Thank you. It's been fantastic to hear about all these exciting steps our members of the Astronaut Reserve are taking. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with anyone curious about space. Be sure to follow us and our Astronaut Reserve members on social media and visit isa.int for all the latest on our missions, training and behind-the-scenes updates. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with ESA Explores!